Hello and welcome to 147 Studio. I'm James and I'm back again with another tutorial. Um, it seems like I'm doing quite a few of these at the moment, which is good. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating sci fi panels with little lights on, um, predominantly for like big buildings like this, but you can take the idea of the sci fi panels and use them on anything to do with sci fi or if you just want to create extra geometry on things without having to model them and so uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to download a bit of software called JS placements and it is at windmillart.net just scroll down to the bottom and you'll see it so just download that it's completely free uh, and when you open it up it looks something a bit like this now I've been using this for years and it it's absolutely brilliant um, it's really good for creating displacement maps inside of like Cinema 4D and Blender and it just gives you the ability to create extra geometry without having to actually model loads of geometry you'll see what i mean in a minute so basically to get started we're just going to come up to these little dots at the top and there's two things that we need to create we need to create uh, an alpha for the lights so that we can tell the material what it's going what and where it's going to be emitting and then we also want to create that extra geometry, the extra fake geometry that is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to JS Placement 2. And you'll come up with a thing like this with the screen. And then we're just going to click Generate. So already that's looking pretty good. It's got lots of different details and also once we actually put it in as a normal and a height map these different colors are going to make it raised or lower depending on um, the brightness of it however we're going to quickly play around with some of the settings I quite like this one because there's lots of extra little bits on let's do So you can have a really, really detailed one. Um, we're not going to go too detailed. Probably something not far off that actually. That would be quite good. So what we're going to do is you can keep on hitting generate and it will constantly um, update and create new versions. So there's an infinite amount of ways you can do this. But what we're going to do is we're going to save a height map. And we'll just save it to downloads for now. And then just for fun, we're going to save a normal as well. So that we can have a look at the differences. So now we've got our actual panels. What we want to do is we want to have a look at creating the lights. So one of the great things about JS Placement is that they've got a dot grid version as well so just up back up to the menu and then hit up dot grid now what this does is when you generate it it's going to come up with lots of little lights and once again it's all going to be based off the uh, brightness values and we're going to turn some of these off so I don't want any circle windows don't want any of them don't want that I'll keep that and then we're going to turn down the drawing chance and turn the scale right down. And then once again, we're just going to go to save height. And we'll save that. So if we come in to Unreal, we've got our scene. And as you can see, my little Sif tower my imperial tower isn't looking too happy at the moment because it's got no uh, it's got no uh, 
material on it. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in and we're gonna drag our three images over. Click OK. So let's get into creating the materials. So find the folder that you want to create your material. Ideally, put it in the same folder as the model. We're going to right click. We're going to go to material and we're going to call this fortress underscore because Unreal doesn't like spaces. Uh, and then just material. So then we double click and it will bring up the node as set. Now, if you haven't played around too much with the node editor before, this will give you a, a, a quite a big understanding on how it works and how you can actually populate really complex materials really easily, like really easily. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to drag it in r3 let's just move that over to the side quickly and so just shift click in and then drag them in i'm going to make this big again so we've got our at the top here we've got our panels and that is the height map and then we've got our panels which is a normal map and then we've got our dot grid lights so we'll just set them up so that it's nice and easy to kind of follow what's going on so the first thing we want to do is we want to tell it what color we actually want our piece and we want quite a dark one so what we're going to go for is a constant three vector excuse me and we'll right click again so to to get these up just right click type in constant it come up with three vector and then on our actual node we're going to right click and we're going to go to convert to parameter and we're going to call this uh, main color and the reason why we're doing it like this is because we want quite a dark color so then we're just gonna hold uh, our left mouse button and drag into the base color now if we come over to parameters we can actually click on that and we can make it a bit darker so and we can play around with the color of our fin so now with our height map and what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the rgb into the metallic and straight away you can see that that makes quite quite the difference so already we've got a a nice um kind of metallic color going into our uh, plugging into our system the next thing we're going to look at is using this normal map and plugging it straight into the normal and what that's going to do is it's going to give it a bit more geometry so the light is going to cast shadows and we could actually play around and play around with uh, the intensity of everything if we so wanted uh, we're not going to in this episode but you will see how to kind of add in extra parameters right now when we start creating the lights so the first thing i'm going to do i'm just going to make this like not black but dark so that you can see a little bit more so then we're going to come over to our light so the first thing we need to do is we need to tell 
our um, our light that this is going to be the texture that we're going to be using okay so what we're going to do is we're going to work on two different sections at the same time and then add them together so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in once again we're going to create a constant so right click and type in constant convert to parameter and this is going to be the emission strength okay and that's going to sit just there so that's our first two pieces put together the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to tell it what color we want so once again we're going to do a constant three vector and we're going to convert to parameter and we're going to call it emission color I'm going to put that about there and then we want to do the actual um, the strength of the color so right click constant and we will convert that to a parameter and we will call this color Okay, so we've got quite a few parameters there. And now we need to get them to start talking to each other. And to do that, we're going to use multiply. So multiply. And we're going to do another multiply. And we're actually going to do another multiply. So let's chuck these somewhere a little bit closer I'm going to plug these two into the first multiply and plug these two into the second and then we're going to plug both of those into the last one so basically what that's going to do is it's going to go this and this equals this this and this equals this and then we want this and this to work together so that when we plug it into our emissive color, we can go into our parameters. Let's go for an orangey glow. And let's bump some of these up. And as you can see, You start getting those lights and you can play around with the brightness of them and then you can go in and if you wanted to kind of give your building a bit of a blue tint so we've got our lights and we've got some extra geometry and it's just from add in a couple of different parameters in so what we're going to do is we're going to click apply we're going to click save i'm just going to minimize this add that up so now we've got our material we're going to come in we're going to click on the object that we want and then in our details tab let's make this a little bit bigger we are going to input our material and straight away you can kind of see what's going on so let's just move that back and that gives it so much more um so much more geometry it gives it a little bit more life uh, you can go in, you can change the actual um, the actual material 
So say we want it to go blue lights, we can just change the emission color. Click apply. And there you go. So doing it like this makes it a lot easier to actually go in and edit stuff a lot quicker. So there's lots of different ways that you can use this, but if you look, let's just get a bit closer and then you can actually see what's going on. So you can see that that the displacement map that we've put on has added all these nice cool panels and then our lights are just giving it a little bit extra which means that we can kind of we can play around a little bit more with the aesthetic and that hasn't taken on too much time to actually do so there you go that's how you create sci-fi buildings um, I'm going to be doing quite a few tutorials over the next couple of weeks and that as I move into my Star Wars fan film a bit more uh, and hopefully you'll join me with that so if you do have any questions queries or anything please feel free to uh, comment on the video and if there's anything you weren't quite sure of maybe we can go in and do a bit of a deep dive into that so i'll see you at the next one and thank you ever so much for watching